realized that my camera is not a mirror. How did I just realize this? That's so weird. Okay, anyway. While well, I'm still using my camera as a mirror. Hey guys! Yes, it's been a while since I've done a video blog, and no, you guys are not missing out on Mask of the Lunar Eclipse this week. All I have left is the finale, and that will be this week, but I decided that there's something else that I wanted to talk about, and I wanted to make sure that I talked about it now, so that way I, like, while I have my thoughts very gathered right now, and I figured now was the best time to get this recorded, and I'm just, it's gonna be really quick and easy to edit, so it's gonna be up on YouTube today, and then Thursday, as normal, you guys are going to get Mask of the Lunar Eclipse. I'll talk a little bit at the end of the video because I personally hate when I jump into a video for a specific topic and have to skip this whole big intro uh, that the person is doing like a life update instead of getting to what I came to the video for. So I'm going to do that first and the updates are going to be at the end for you guys. I don't know if I'm going to work it into the title or not, but I went to see Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse on Saturday. It is currently Tuesday the 6th right now, so it's only been a few days since I've seen it. And I've had the time to process everything and gather my own personal thoughts and make sure I have my own personal opinion about it. Um, and I'm seeing a whole lot of other people online talking about it as well. But here's my thing, okay? Maybe I should back up a little bit and kind of start with where I was when I went to see it. So, obviously, it's a sequel. So you're going to compare it to the first one. Into the Spider-Verse was an experience for me. I hate the fact that I missed out on seeing this in theaters. I wish I would have. There are so many sequences in that film that I wish I would have been able to see on the big screen with good surround sound, but I, I missed out on it because I wasn't really sure how I felt about another Spider-Man film. Granted, I love Spider-Man. If I had to pick a favorite superhero, it would be Spider-Man. It had nothing to do with it being Miles, because I know that Miles Morales is an actual, like, Spider-Man character in this in the comic book. So, like, that's that's fine. If you want to change if they were to if they were to do Gwen as the main character, I think I would have still had the same hesitations of why do we have to have another Spider-Man? But so I went into into the Spider-Verse with pretty low expectations. Needless to say, I was blown away. Now, seeing the trailers and everything of this film, I knew I was going to want to, I was, I, I knew the art style and the animation was something special. But aside from that, deep down, I just didn't know if we really needed another Spider-Man film. But man, was I blown away. <laughs> Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse is honestly a masterpiece. When it comes to art, animation, writing, and, like, cinematography, every little detail counted in that film. Everything was done for a reason. And it's great. So, I went into Across the Spider-Verse with the expectation to be blown away in the same sense that Into the Spider-Verse blew me away. Not really fair. I should have gone into it knowing it was a sequel. I should have gone into it knowing that it was Across the Spider-Verse Part 1. Apparently they changed the title of the third film, and so they dropped the Part 1. So a lot of people got blindsided by that. It wasn't until partway through the film that I really started to realize, like, okay, this is a Part 1. This is a lot of setup, and we should get the payoff in the next film. Now, it doesn't make that okay, because... Honestly, I wasn't blown away, like I said. The film was beautiful. It was very stylized. Every Spider-Man that had, like, a front and center role had their own style, and, like, they, it, it was great. It was captured so well. That I'll give credit for. But the unfortunate thing is that... When all of the spider people were on screen, you lost all that sense of style. It just became this jumbled mess of mush. You, you couldn't appreciate it. 
the the thing the thing about the art style in the in Into the Spider Verse was that it all took place in Miles's universe. So everything was stylized exactly the same, except for the spider people who came from other universes. Obviously, Peter Porker was 2D animated, which is fine because he's from a cartoon universe. Then Penny is very manga style animated, but it all took place in Miles' universe. I know at the beginning I was seeing like those red and blue lines. I almost felt like I was watching one of those old 3D films where you had to put on the red and green glasses or red and blue. I can't remember what color it really was. Also, I have a blue, I have a colorblind blue deficiency. So for all I know, they could have been blue or green and I just don't know. But I felt like I was watching one of those old 3D films that used those paper red and green glasses to watch. And when you took those glasses off, the screen had these weird red and green layers that like outlined the characters. It looked very strange, but whenever I watched Into the Spider-Verse, there was that kind of effect going on at the beginning. Oddly enough, when my eyes adjusted, I didn't notice it anymore. But you didn't have that sense of relief in Across the Spider-Verse. You started the first 20 minutes in Gwen's universe which was stylized differently from what it was in the first one, which I really wish they would have just done with the with the style that they did in the first one rather than what they did in this one cuz the color palette just it, it 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 just felt gross to me. Like that's my personal opinion. Like the there was so many random really saturated colors that like some of it made sense and some of it not so much. I I don't really know how to explain it. And then after those 20 minutes, we wound up in Miles' universe. And honestly, that was a breath of fresh air for me when I started seeing those, I think they're called Ben Day dots, where uh, that they did in the they did it in the first one for, for Miles' universe. Those like comic book dots that accented some of the shots. Um, I think they're called Ben Day dots. Uh, I, correct me if I'm wrong, please. Like, I, I, I'm pretty sure that's what they're called. But if I'm wrong, please tell me. And I, like... It'll be in the comments if somebody corrected me. <laughs> but that was a breath of fresh air for me. Only to realize that in the next 30 minutes, we left that universe. I'm going to try to keep this relatively spoiler free, by the way. So bear with me. So we got information dump for the first 20 minutes in Gwen's universe. We got more information dump and some trying to be emotional and... Miles' universe? I, I'm starting to notice that sometimes writers want us to care about these random characters, but they don't really give us good, good reasons to care about them. And I started to notice that in the first 30 minutes or so of this film. And then, once we left Miles' universe, there was more information dump. And then there was kind of an action scene which was really cool i'll give it that very it was a it was very much a spectacle to have so many models on the screen so many different styles happening and some of them like even if it's just for the comedy or if it's just to show off this style either way they gave they gave some of them the amount of time that they needed to show that they were a little bit different from, you know, this Spider-Man versus that Spider-Man, obviously. Um, it's off topic a little bit. Speaking of comedy, the, the film was funny. Like, there was a good few times that I cracked up. Like, out loud. I loved it, okay? The film was funny. I'll give it that. But I went into it with the expect expectations of Into the Spider-Verse, which I was expecting thrill and action and this chase scene was happening and I was, and I was really feeling it. Like, I, like, it was tense. I felt it. It was great. But then there's this weird exposition dump right in the middle of it. Stop talking. The chase scene ended feeling a little bit more rewarding on Miles' part. Um, for my, like, I really like Miles Morales in Into the Spider-Verse and Across the Spider-Verse. I, I like him as a character. And according to Bradley, I've, because I've never read the comics, but apparently in the comics, Miles is not a really likable character. 
But in my opinion, in in the Spider-Verse films, I think he's a really likable character. He's kind of cocky, but in a kind of charming way. He's also a teenager, so they're going to be kind of cocky. But he's not an annoying t- teenager. Like, he grew a lot in the first one. He shows how much he's grown in the second one. And I really like Miles. So this chase scene finishing with this reward for Miles... It made me feel really rewarded, too. So, yeah, we had exposition on top of exposition on top of exposition. And we're over an hour into the film now. And hardly anything happened. Like I said, the chase scene was great. The chase scene was too short. And the chase scene was oddly choppy, which bothered me. Because, like I said, they they gave some time to appreciate, like, like, the different spider people, like, they took the time to, like, get the camera on them and show them, like, if they're different from this spider person and blah blah blah. But, honestly, I think maybe what what it is, is I wanted to see more of Miles. Like, I maybe I wanted more of Miles and Miguel both, where, like, the stakes felt higher. Where, you know, if Miguel, like, if it was very obvious that Miguel was staying right on Miles' tail, like, I think that would have made it a lot better. And, like, making them longer tracking shots, like what we got in the first one, this one just got cut up. Where, like, one moment you feel like Miguel's, like, right on his tail, and then it cuts. And you get this jar, and it seems like Miles' league's ahead of him now. And it's like, okay? I just realized... I splashed toothpaste on myself. That looks classy on me, doesn't it? I'll just stay down like this so you guys can't see it. <laughs> it's toothpaste. I swear it. I literally just brushed my teeth. I can't believe I've gone 20 minutes recording this video and just now noticed it. <laughs> so the chase scene wrapped up and I personally felt rewarded. It was, it was pretty good, I'll admit. Like, I'm not gonna sit here and say it was great, it was a spectacle or anything, but some of it, some of the aspects were, were a spectacle, like the scale and how many models were on screen, that was a spectacle in and of itself. But it wasn't this grand, blew me away kind of chase scene. It was, it was rewarding, I'll give it that. It was good. And then more dialogue started. Grinding the film to a halt. Looking back, knowing that it's supposed to be Across the Spider-Verse Part 1, it makes sense as to why there's all this setup and setup and setup. But as a film, you can understand why that can hurt a film. Okay, but the best part for me in the film was the ending. Not, I'm not saying that it... The whole joke of, I loved the ending because it was over. No, that's not what I'm saying. I actually loved the ending. The last 20 or so minutes of the film, it was, it was great. Like, it felt like it pulled you this way, and then it's like, nope, we're going this way. And, like, there were so many layers that were revealed, one after another, that... Like, literally, I ended up doing one of these, like, grabbing the, um, armrest of my chair, and my, I was there with my friend, and she had her leg up like this on hers, and she was sitting right next to me. So I go to grab it, just gripped her freaking leg when it happened. (laughs) We got a kick out of that, though, but, like, I didn't mean to grab her, but I, like, grabbed hold of it, and I'm sitting here like this, like... I swear I was making that sound, too. Like, I was making an audible sound when all of this was going on. And then the freaking credits rolled, and I was like, all right, I'm excited for the third one. Now I'm excited for the third one. But, this is a big but, okay? I'm, I was blown away by the ending. I really was. I really enjoyed it. I think it, I think it was really, I think it was really surprising. I was blown away by the ending. By the last, like, 20 minutes of the film. 
was really well done. But I'm not going to hold the film to a higher standard just because of the last 20 minutes. I, like, I say the same thing about Up. Disney Pixar's Up. I don't like Up. I know, really unpopular opinion. I thought it was really annoying how much everybody really adored this film, when the reason everybody really adores this film is because of the first 15 minutes. I get it. it it's beautiful. No dialogue. Visual storytelling. Emotions told through color and lighting. It's beautiful. I'll admit it. The Like, the first part of up is really pretty and really great and really emotional it was really well done but the rest of the film is lackluster so i'm not gonna put up on the top of my pixar list because of the first 15 minutes no i look at the film as a whole because that's what it is that's the same thing with across the spider-verse I'm not going to hold Spider-Verse to a higher standard just because I really thoroughly enjoyed the last 20 minutes. The last 20 minutes were phenomenal. Like, I thought it was really well done. And don't get me wrong. Out of anybody on this planet, I can guarantee you I was probably one of them who wanted it to succeed the most. Strictly because if DreamWorks wants to go through with a live-action How to Train Your Dragon, that means that DreamWorks is gonna die. I need a new favorite animation studio, Sony. Don't let me down on Beyond the Spider-Verse. <laughs> also, uh, Beyond the Spider-Verse. So, like I said, they changed the name of the third one. The third one is confirmed for, I think, the 24th of March in 2024. So we don't have long to wait, which I knew that was gonna be the case. But that still doesn't change the fact that this is still a, its own film, and I'm and that's what we're talking about. I'm grateful that we don't need to wait too long, but I'm also a little bit worried about Beyond the Spider Verse. They have a lot of ends to wrap up. I'm not gonna, I'm not trying to say that Across the Spider Verse was bad because it has its good things and it has its flaws. I'm not going to sit here and say that it was phenomenal and it blew me away like a lot of like a, like I've seen a lot of people saying. I guess at the end of the day, I'm kind of wondering if I'm the only one. Did I miss something? Like I said, you're going to compare the first and second film and when you're comparing Into the Spider-Verse versus Across the Spider-Verse, I'm sorry, Into the Spider-Verse takes the cake. Like I said, Into the Spider-Verse what is one of very few films that I consider a masterpiece. Like, it was just all so well done with some of these cinematic shots, like like the What's Up Danger scene, the Leap of Faith, Miles' Leap of Faith. Is it Miles's or Miles? Is Miles already plural? Or... What's the word for possessive? Is it Miles or Miles's? But during Miles' Leap of Faith, when he jumps from the building, it, it, there's a couple of quick cuts in, like, the comic book kind of style. Like, it shows different panels and everything. There's the quick cut of his hand breaking the glass because it, it's, it's showing, like, he wasn't willing to actually let go. He's actually still terrified because he's a kid jumping off of a skyscraper in New York. I'd be scared, too. <laughs> So he jumps, and throughout this, in his head, he's reminded that he was told that he never knows when you're supposed when you become when you become Spider Man. It's a leap of faith. So as he jumped, he doesn't start to fall into New York. He be he begins to rise because the next shot is inverted with the cityscape on the top and he's rising into it it's it's just like that scene in and of itself was a masterpiece it was so well done and once he starts moving through the city and swinging and he's and he's pick he's figured out his own momentum and his own abilities 
you feel his energy and oh it's just oh i could carry on about that film forever it's just so gorgeous not just art and animation wise but like it was so well done and one of my favorite scenes uh is actually my actually i would say it might be my favorite scene in the film and my it's my favorite because of the soundtrack the prowler theme oh my god when miles is in his uncle's uh apartment and he sees prowler outside and there's the prowler comes in he has a phone call takes off his mask reveals it's his uncle blah 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 right spoiler i guess it's an older film i feel like you guys should know that should should know this um miles cloaked himself he's got the cloaking ability and he's hiding in plain sight with the prowler in his face and then it reveals that it's his uncle and when his uncle walks back out the window miles is like this backed into a corner just panting and you hear the prowler theme just Wham, like oh my god like it's so intense and you feel how scared miles is oh it's just so well done and in comparison to across the spider-verse there were it was lacking things like that aside from the ending and like i said Am I the only one? I might be the only one. Maybe I'm overanalyzing it because I really, I knew I was going into a part one film, but I didn't know it was going to set up this much. And as I mentioned before, I'm a little bit worried that Beyond the Spider-Verse has too much to wrap up. I have faith, though, that if they go into Beyond the Spider-Verse and just no holds bar, like, yeah, I, I, do I think they can do it? Yes. It's a, it's still a bit, a little bit scary. <laughs> Regardless, I enjoy it across the Spider-Verse. Don't get me wrong. It's just flawed. And I'm not going to sit here and talk about it like it's a spectacle. It got a 96 on Rotten Tomatoes audience score. I don't really pay attention to critics because critics don't know what the frick they're talking about. But audience score, they got he got a 96. That is kind of surprising to me. But I think what's happening is people are having the same reaction as me, where they're walking out of the theater with the ending in mind. And like I said, the ending was the best part of the film. So that's where their brains are, and that's why they're like, oh, it was great, it was a masterpiece, it, it blew me away. Like, yeah, the last 20 minutes did. But what about the other two hours? Yes, it's a two hour and 20 minute movie. Sony actually broke the world record for the longest animated feature film. Go Sony, but it didn't need to be two hours long. Come on guys. <laughs> I enjoyed Across the Spider-Verse. I just admit that it was flawed. I'm excited for Beyond the Spider-Verse. If DreamWorks is gonna die, Sony is going to be my new favorite animation studio. <laughs> yes, I'm aware they brought Emoji Movie, but they also brought us into the Spider-Verse. And Mitchells vs. the Machines. Can we talk about that film one day? Like, because Mitchells vs. the Machines doesn't have any business being so good. <laughs> if you think I'm blowing hot air, guys, let me know in the comments, really. Like, if you guys really think that I missed something in the film, let me know. I'll go see it again. Because I don't think I did. But if you really think I did, I'll go see it again and I'll make another video and say, you know what? I was wrong. But... I don't think I was. <laughs> but anyway, like I said, I just wanted to get some of my thoughts out to you guys because I feel like out of everybody, I needed to talk about it because like I loved Into the Spider-Verse just because of the art and animation style that was in it. Um, They really outdid themselves with Into the Spider-Verse. So I really wanted Across the Spider-Verse to be successful. And by all means, Across the Spider-Verse is, is extremely successful. But due to the fact that Beyond the Spider-Verse is already, is already like, probably in close to post-production by now, none of the budget that Across the Spider-Verse is making is going to Beyond the, Sp the Spider-Verse. So, like, I don't know if that's going to hurt it or not. I don't know. 
But I wanted this film to be successful. Don't get me wrong. I, out of everybody, I think I wanted it to, the most to be successful. Aside from Sony Animation's team. Obviously, they want it to be successful. I wanted it to be successful. Don't get me wrong. But I also wanted it to be successful for being a good film. And I guess it is a good film, but it's definitely not a 96% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. If I was to rate it, like, on a scale of 1 to 10, I would put Into the Spider-Verse... Honestly, a 10 out of 10, obviously, because, like, I think it's a masterpiece. I can't think of a whole lot of flaws in that film. But if I was to rate Across the Spider-Verse, I think I would put it at, like, a 7.5. Or maybe even, like, high, like, high 7 point something to, like, an 8. Like, it was good. Not that good. So anyway, like I said, I wanted to talk about it. You guys will still be getting Mask of the Lunar Eclipse on Thursday, by the way. I just wanted to get some of my thoughts out, and this is going to be an easy edit as well, which is why I did it. Quick update, though, for you guys who have followed me for a little bit. Um, when I recorded Mask of the Lunar Eclipse during that week-long marathon that I had set up for it, um, I was working at a fast food place. And not long after Mask of the Lunar Eclipse, I had quit that place, and... I had gotten a job at a grooming shop. Uh, I think I actually have a video from a long, long time ago from when I got certified as a dog groomer. I think there's a video. But anyway, I worked there for a little over a month. And my boss just kind of stopped showing up. So, so did I. <laughs> um, that happened probably about three weeks ago. And then the next week... Um, I got an email from Twitch that I had made their affiliate program. It was exciting, to say the least. So, I really want to commit more to streaming. Like, first thing on my list, Bradley wants to make me a boom arm for my microphone. Because it's just sitting on my desk right now. And I think he could do it pretty easily with just some, like, PVC pipe. So, I mean, it's like, I'm going to let him do it. The other thing that I want to take care of is the lighting situation. I'm gonna, I'm, I have an idea of what I want to do back here. Um, I'm gonna put some lights, like LED lights on the outside of these bookshelves to like light up the wall a little bit, add some color to the background. And then I want to get like a proper light for the corner over here, like a key light or a ring light. So I am gonna be taking streaming a lot more seriously. Um, YouTube's not going anywhere. I like, I like streaming stuff and then getting it on YouTube so that way every, anybody who missed the stream can find it here. I like doing that. Um, Fatal Frame Mask of the Lunar Eclipse finale will be on Thursday. Yes, that is going to be the final part. And, um, I had someone in chat request a long time ago. I was playing Stardew Valley on Switch, uh, on stream a little while ago and I pulled up my switch's library and they saw luigi's mansion in there i have never played luigi's mansion that was bradley's game and i had never played it they saw that and they requested that i play that and i was like all right a first time playthrough of luigi's mansion why not so that's gonna be next on the playthrough list probably after luigi's mansion i am going to play through fatal frame one i want to get fatal frame one out of the way first um, it's definitely my least favorite. It's very clunky as far as gameplay and voice acting. Yeah, it, it's, it's just kind of rough. So I want it out of the way. And then, I don't know what I'm going to do after that. But, um, that's the plan. So I've got a little bit of an update here for you guys. Um, I might talk about more updates throughout um, like, other playthroughs and stuff like that for you guys. I don't know. Like, nothing a whole lot happens in my life, so it's hard to have make life update, like, video blogs and just talk to you guys. <laughs> but, yeah. So next, I'm going to be playing Luigi's Mansion. I'll probably have a vlog in between Luigi's Mansion and Fatal Frame. I will be getting the entire play, the entire series of Fatal Frame up on my channel. 
and maybe a, few, a couple years from now I'll do like a Halloween full run of all of them back to back. Maybe. <laughs> but yeah, from going to no job to affiliate to now I'm job hunting again and YouTube, like honestly YouTube is kind of the easier one to keep up on because editing's not that hard, at least not for me. Um the hard the hard part is just finding the time for it because especially like those 2-hour fatal frame videos, those are the ones that can be difficult. So yeah, just know I appreciate you guys. I appreciate everybody on Twitch. I appreciate everybody here because I recently hit 100 subscribers as well. And that snuck up on me. I am now, I think, in the 130s. Like, you guys are, like, flocking in from nowhere. And I don't know if it's because you guys are sharing the videos or whatever. I try not to get super caught up in the analytics. But regardless, I appreciate everybody who's here, who's subscribed, who's followed me on Twitch, who's subscribed on Twitch. I appreciate you guys. Like, I really want to see where this can go. These couple of weeks before finding this other, this new job, like, while I'm job hunting, makes me really appreciate, like, my hobbies and just being able to share them with other people who share the same interests. <laughs> anyway, before I get too sentimental, I guess, um, I will see you guys on Thursday with the Fatal Frame Mask of the Lunar Eclipse finale, or I am streaming tomorrow on Twitch. Twitch link will be in the description for you guys. So I will see you guys tomorrow or Thursday or sometime next week. Bye guys.